Welcome to the final ACE Math Calculus review video. In this video we're going to talk about 3D integration and a few other integration applications. Um, my next video related to ACE Math is probably going to be a practice, uh, a few practice questions. Um, I might do other algebra or trigonometry questions that I find interesting and I'll do a bunch of those practice questions. So I'm going to try to help prepare you for the ACE exam as much as I can. So yeah, but first let's finish some of these integration applications. So basically, um, we have a region R which is bounded by y equals 8, y equals x cubed, and the y-axis. And so we're supposed to find the area in terms of x, okay? This doesn't really mean anything for now, this last part. Um, it'll mean something when we uh, when we do part B, which is finding the area in terms of y, okay? For now, it's just x. So pretty much just set up an integral. So first we should draw a picture. That's probably the best thing to do. I'll just draw a picture off to the side here. So I'll just draw my axes like that. Okay, let's, okay. <laughs> just draw my axes like that. Um, and then we can draw like a rough sketch of what our shapes look like. So y equals eight is gonna be up here, okay? And then y equals x cubed is gonna look like this, something like that right? And uh, the y-axis is obviously this black line here. And so what we're looking at is the stuff in here. All that. That's our shaded region. Okay, so we just have to find this area in terms of x. So what we need is to basically set up just an integral. Okay, so we're going to set up this integral. Okay, from first from what to what? Well, I mean, we could we know it starts at zero, like because that's where it crosses. So we can we can already put a zero here. But how about this? Like, what's up here? Because we need to know what this uh, what this kind of goes to. Because once we know that, I mean, we can set up our integral pretty easily. So what we do is we want to find the point of intersection between these two lines. So let's just set eight equal to x cubed. And it's pretty easy, cube root of 8 is just 2, so it's just 2 equals x. And yeah, I mean, we could just say it goes from 0 to 2. Oops, that's a little bold, but yeah. So it goes from 0 to 2. And um, that, that's all we need. So, how are we going to find this area here? Because if we just do uh, x cubed, if we just find the integral of x cubed, that's finding this area, but we don't want this area. We want 8 minus x cubed, because that will give us this area. So, let's just write that. So, the integral of 8 minus x cubed dx. Alright, and that's it. Um, now we just evaluate this like a normal integral, and we get that this is going to be 8x minus, uh, we have x to the fourth over 4, all right, and that is evaluated from 0 to 2. And so I'm not going to do the work for you, you can if you want, but this comes out to be 64 over 30, okay? So now instead, let's kind of get rid of this and let's assume that we're now going to work with y. So instead of this being x, this is now finding the area in terms of y. Right, so this is our part b here. And so how would we approach this problem? Well, we're going to have to use dy's and y's and all that. So what we would do is turn this into, uh, turn actually both of these equations into kind of x equations. Um, because now we're kind of like flipping it on its side. And so basically, what we, we, what we can think about 
is having this flipped on its side, like over like that, um, and kind of uh, looking at it like that. So let me let me show you show you what I mean. So since we're working in terms of y, the y values we care about. So this is going to be our boundaries here. So we're going from zero to eight because it's zero here and eight here. So we can already fill out some some of our information. So we have our boundaries from zero to eight. Okay, so now we need this area. Well, if you think about it, we just have, we just have this area. And it's not x cubed because we're working with y's here. So we need to convert that equation into a, an x equation. So we have x is equal to y to the one third. Pretty just rearranging stuff. And so this is y to the one third. And we're subtracting zero because I mean, it's just this area, you know, it's not anything special. We're not doing this minus that. So all we have to do is put in y to the one third dy. dy. And so then we just do our basic integration. So this is uh, y to the four thirds divided by four thirds, all right? And that's evaluated from zero to eight. And then from here, we can take out a four thirds. I'm sorry, it's a three fourths because uh, it's, we're dividing by it. So we're gonna take out a three fourths. Uh, and then we have y to the four thirds from zero to eight. That's a pretty easy thing to solve. You can just plug in an eight and you're pretty much almost done. This comes out to be 64 over three as well. And it makes sense that it's the same number because it's the same exact area. It's the same like piece of, it's the same region. So if we're taking in any way that we try to find this region, it'll be the same. So, yeah. All right, so for part C, we're gonna find the volume of R when it is rotated 360 degrees about the y-axis. Okay, that's a lot, but it's really not that hard. So if we redraw our diagram here, let me just put in our bounds here, or our uh, equations. So we have our y equals eight, and then we have our y equals x cubed, all right? And so this is our shaded region R, all right? And so we're basically rotating 360 degrees about the y-axis. So this axis is rotating, okay? And if you think about it, you could think like, okay, so we have our y-axis here and then we're rotating something around it. So anything that's on this side, so like this, this is on this side, it's gonna also rotate on this side. So we're gonna have to kind of like copy it over here, okay? And we're just drawing this to make it look 3D, uh, and then we're gonna kind of like draw like a little, you know, to show it's like a surface over there. All right, so that's kind of 3D, all right? Um, our, our best attempt, all right? It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but you could you could think now like, okay, well, we have this this like, like closed bowl, like this, it, it, it's like a bowl without the inside, you know, it's just, it's just like a, like a, I don't even know. But so we have this and now we're trying to find the volume of it, but how would we find a volume using integrals? Well, since you're rotating this, okay, and it's, it's got like a bunch of circles here because basically from the top, this, this shape looks like a circle. It's just a circle from the top, right? And so when you're looking down on it and it's just gonna kind of go in, Inward. And so each of these circles has a pi r squared area. And if we add up all of our areas using an integral, that's great. That, that tells us our answer. Now, we have a problem. Our radius is variable. It changes because down here the radius is different, but it's, it's different than up here. So we need a way to figure out uh, how to add up all these disks with different radii, okay? 
So, um, we're, our, our radius is not going to be just a number. It's going to be a function. But what is our function? Well, it's just our equation, right? Because that's, that's all it is. You know, up here it's going to be this cubed, and it's going to be that cubed, and all that. But notice how we're doing this around the, about the y-axis. So that means that we have to change this to x equals y to the one-third power, all right? And so now we can do this. So let's, let's set everything up, okay? So we, have, we go from our integral from, well, 0 to 8, because those are our y value bounds. Um, and so we have our pi times, what is our radius? Our radius we said was y to the one third. And then we're going to square it, because that's pi r squared. This is pi r squared, and that's it. And then we just add them all up with our dy. And this is actually pretty easy to solve. We can actually move the pi out. Uh, so this is just pi times the integral of from 0 to 8 y to the 2 thirds dy. Okay, and that's going to give us pi times, well, this is y to the 2 thirds. Uh, we're going to add uh, 3 thirds you could think of. So we're going to, and then we're going to divide by 5 thirds. So it's going to be y to the 5 thirds divided by 5 thirds. So this is just multiplying by 3 fifths since inverse, all that. So this is y to the 5 thirds. Uh, yeah, and then from 0 to 8. Okay, so this is pretty easy to solve. This is just 3 pi divided by 5 times, well, 8 to the 5 thirds minus 0 to the 5 thirds, right? 3 pi divided by 5 times, all right, 8 to the 5 thirds. Well, you could think of this as 8 to the 1 third, which is 2, to the 5th, you could think, all right, well, we got 2, or 8, 16, 32, so it's just going to be 32, and then this is just going to be 0. So 32, and all right, 32, we're going to, we can't just divide it by 5, so we have to multiply by 3, so 30, 60, 90, 96 pi divided by 5, and that is our answer. So yeah, that's revolving this about the y-axis. All right, so now, what if we have to revolve this region about the x-axis, okay? That seems a lot simpler, because now we don't have to deal with our y's, we can just deal directly with our x's, but look at this. So we're uh, revolving around this, so let me just, uh, let me just draw this out again, so we're gonna kind of do a spiral around here, and that's gonna create a spiral like this, so we can draw this out here. So we're going to have this region, kind of, and then it's going to go up to negative 8, and so kind of the same, and then we have that there. So yeah, that's our region, okay? It's no longer a disk, okay? Uh, because we have, if we go from uh, bottom to top, uh, up on, on this, on the y-axis, it's just a disk. But up here, it's like part of a disk and then another part of a disk, it's just kind of confusing. This is kind of bothering me. It, it should be out a little more. Um, let me just uh, fix this up here so it's like that. Or like that. There we go. All right. So basically, uh, what we do is we're, uh, we're going to use what's called the washer method. So previously, we were using the disk method. Now we're going to use the washer method. So washer, basically, it's, it's like a circle with holes. It's a disk with a hole in the middle. So... Uh, if you think about it, we have, from the top, we have, we can draw a little diagram. So this is our disk, okay, which would be like this, this like area up here. But inside, we have this little hole in here, okay, so that's our washer. Um, so we have a radius of one, and of course we have to, uh, actually, this, this is like our, our circle one, so I'll call it C1, this is C2, okay? So, um, we can actually measure the radii. So we have this radius, and then we have that radius. So 
this radius is radius one, and that radius, uh, I'm sorry, radius two. This is radius one. And so the importance of this is because we're have to, we have to find the area. So uh, the area of the larger circle area one is going to be equal to uh, pi times the radius one squared. And then a sub two is going to be pi times the radius two squared, okay? And so to find the area of this region, so this, not the inside, we're gonna take a one and subtract a two because that's what we're trying to find. So a one minus a two is equal to pi r one squared minus pi r two squared, okay? Or you could just back draw the pi. Pi times r1 squared minus r2 squared. And that is it. And then we can just, if we want to add up all these, we can start, we can take the integral and then d, I guess c in this case, dc. Um, and so you can put an x and y or whatever. So yeah, that's the washer method. Let's figure this out. Basically, the way we're going to start is we have to find our first radius and then the second radius. So uh, let's let's label these. So radius uh, the outside and then the radius of the inside. So radius one is just well, I mean, our our, our outside function is just eight, right? That's it. I mean, it, it's just eight. And then our inside function. This is just x cubed. So that's it. I mean, all we have to do is set up our integral and square these functions. So, well, uh, we already said that uh, when eight is equal to x squared, or x cubed, I'm sorry, uh, then x is equal to two. So we, we go from zero to two of r1 squared, which is uh, eight squared, minus r2 squared, which is x cubed squared. Then we have our dx, that's it. Uh, now well, all we have to do is solve it. So then we can go to pi, times the integral of zero to eight of eight squared is 64 minus x to the sixth, we put a dx there. And now we just solve this. So pi times, and I, I take the pi out because it's, it's a constant. You can kind of just take out a constant term since it's not involved in the actual integral really. So uh, this 64 becomes 64x, uh, this x to the sixth becomes x to the seventh over seven from zero to eight. All right. And I'm going to find the answer. And the answer to this is negative 2,093,568 pi divided by seven. That's a pretty large number. Um, I mean, it's like 2 million divided by 7, but you know, or two, 6 million divided by 7, but whatever. Um, essentially, this is uh, the stuff you'll have to do. You're probably never going to have to actually do this calculation, but uh, this is just an example. Uh, pretty much everything, uh, you should know Riemann sums, basically, whenever you, uh, whenever you're approximating an area, you can, let's say, have this graph and you're going to approximate it using uh, rectangles of equal width or trapezoids of equal width. And so you kind of just approximate each area. Um, and yeah, so that kind of stuff you should also know. Uh, but that's most of, mo mo most of these integration applications are 3D integrals, uh, which we covered both types in this episode. So I think you should be good. So good luck and thanks for watching and I will see you in future review videos. Bye.